Hey, what's going on guys? ZTA Prime back here again. Today I have another little mini PC to do a quick review on. This is the Ace PC AK-1. As you can see, it's a dual stack design. The bottom will house a 2.5 inch SSD or a mechanical hard drive. There are two little locking mechanisms that allows you to pull the bottom off. There is a USB type C port that the hard drive inside of the bottom will be powered by. I'm using an HGST 500 gigabyte mechanical drive because I don't have any SSDs free right now. I'm going to go over the specs of the AK-1. For the CPU, we have a Celeron Apollo Lake J3455. It turbos up to 2.3 gigahertz, normally at 1.5. 4 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. The GPU is an Intel HD500 up to 750 megahertz. Comes with a fully activated version of Windows 10 Home, SATA expansion disk as you saw on the bottom, plus it has an M.2 slot inside of the unit itself. Gigabit Ethernet, two USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.0 ports, and one USB Type-C. So I've been really interested in the Celeron Apollo Lake J3455 to see if we could run any games on here. Now it should definitely super succeed the X5 Atom. I'm not sure about the X7 though. I did go ahead and take it apart to see what we were working with inside. And it is fan cooled, which is a big plus because a lot of these PCs are passively cooled with no fan. And it also has the M.2 expansion port inside for extra storage. One of the biggest problems encountered with these mini PCs is the throttling of the CPU when it gets to a certain temperature. This has a fan set up, so it should not throttle on us. We should be able to stay at that 2.3 gigahertz mark all the time. In this video, all I'm gonna be doing is testing some PC games. Now this thing will handle Kodi perfectly, Netflix, YouTube, it does 4K playback pretty good. You can do web browsing, you can check your email on it. The main thing I wanna know about this Intel chip is if it'll play games. Now I did test Dolphin and unfortunately Dolphin is very slow. Same with the PS2 emulator. Dreamcast, Nintendo 64, MAME, Sega Saturn, all of that works great with this Intel chip here. We cannot do GameCube and Wii and we cannot do PS2. So I've tested a few games. We're gonna move over there now and see how they perform. All right, so here we are. Windows 10 Home, Intel Celeron J. 3455 at 1.5 gigahertz. It does turbo up to 2.3, four gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. Now in this video, I'm just gonna test a few PC games. Like I said, this thing's gonna handle video playback perfectly fine. Hulu, Amazon Video, Netflix, YouTube, it's gonna do it. What I'm interested in are some Steam and PC games. Now I have a few here. If you guys want to see more games run on this unit, let me know. And next week, I can do another video. I will do five more PC games running on this. But first up, we're going to try RoboCraft. I have tested this game out before on a different PC. I don't play it normally, so this might be a horrible gameplay. Just bear with me here. So as you can see up in the top left hand corner, I do have Fraps running so you can see the FPS here. I have not changed any of the settings, I just went into this game and started playing it. We're at 45 FPS, which is decent for a small, low powered computer like this. I'm actually surprised it's running this well. So I did test this game out once before on a different PC and I actually enjoyed this idea of Robocraft. I kind of want to start playing this game. I know it's kind of Minecraft-y with robots, but it definitely piques my interest. I wanted to test a few games that people are playing, that people boot up on their PC every day and play. Now this was on most played on Steam this week, I guess, so that's why I downloaded it and wanted to test it on this thing. Looks like it's doing pretty good for what this PC is. If there is a resolution setting, which I didn't see, I'm sure there is something in the setting somewhere, we could get an even better FPS, but this is definitely playable at 40. Next up, I tested Team Fortress 2, and it's not so great. It looks good right now. I do have the resolution set on the lowest resolution I could go within Team Fortress, but as soon as we get into battle, the FPS dips down a lot. I've seen it go as low as 15 in some spots when there's a lot of players on the screen and a lot of explosions going on. You could probably get by playing this, but not competitively.
I can tell you right now that Half-Life 2 is going to run really good on this machine. I didn't test it in this video, but this runs on the same engine and there's just so much more going on. I'm willing to bet you would get 50 to 60 FPS at 720p in Half-Life 2 and Portal. Next game, Crisis. I test this on all these mini PCs and this is one of the best performers that I've seen. I know it's only at 30 FPS, but a lot of the other chips run it at 20. This is at 720p. I didn't have to go down to 800 by 600 with it. If you did, you get even better frame rate. My sound capture would not capture the sound from this game, but the sound is working perfectly through HDMI. After I recorded the video, I just didn't have sound for some reason. When you get into battle, when there's a lot of players on screen, lots of bullets flying around, explosions, the frame rate will dip down. I mean, that's a given with a little tiny chip like this. This isn't a game I'm going to be playing all the time. This is just a game I like to test to see if it'll even run it. Just skip ahead a little bit so we can get some gunfire going in. Now that's only one character there I just gunned down. There should be two more up here. And as you can see, the frame rate is already dipping. It does run the game, and like I said, this is at 720p, so if you went a little bit lower with it, you would probably get about 40 FPS, and it could possibly stay at 30 when there's a lot of stuff going on. The last game I'm testing in this video is Minecraft. This is the Windows Store Edition, and it runs flawlessly. Now, I was sure it was going to run Minecraft really well. This is a very highly optimized game, and it runs on a lot of lower-end chips. But this is one of the games that a lot of people might be playing if they buy a small PC like this. No. So overall, the Ace PC AK-1 does handle these games Decently, I mean, considering what kind of PC this thing is, the J3455 is not as good as I thought it was going to be. I was really hoping we would get decent performance in Dolphin. But if you want to play older Steam games or older PCs, and a lot of indie games are also going to work good on here, we did test Bindi in the Ink Machine, and it runs perfect at 720p using this PC here. So this PC is actually going to go in my daughter's room so she can play Bendy and the Ink Machine, Minecraft, and those lower-end Steam games that she loves so much. She'll also be able to watch YouTube and Netflix on this with no trouble at all. So if you're looking for a low-powered small PC with Windows 10 ready to go set up out of the box, this is a great option for you. These are available on Amazon, and I'll leave links down below. If you're interested, you can go ahead and get one. If not, I completely understand. But I really wanted to test this J3455 chip, and I'm a little disappointed with it. We're just going to have to wait until Intel puts out their next generation of Celeron chips so we can play Dolphin at full speed. Really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe. And like always, thanks for watching.